This is Michael Lukies here with Nero Thombie Pillay of NeroThombiePillay.com. Um, and we're going to be speaking about overcoming and transforming adversity into an advantage in business. Nero, how are you? I'm really well, Michael. I'm honored to, to be here. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. So how do you, let's start off with defining adversity. How do you define adversity? Look, I define adversity really as any sort of a difficulty or obstacle that you have to overcome in order to achieve an, an, an outcome. Um, because really, if there wasn't, if you didn't have a particular outcome that you're trying to achieve, especially in business, often the obstacle would be I irrelevant. Um, for example, you know, if you've got a, a rogue em employee who you now want to, um, say, get, get rid of or, or, or fire, well, now the obstacle is how do you have that conversation with him in order to remove him from the business so that you can mo move forward. So there's an outcome there of having to remove someone, but um, the adversity is in having that difficult conversation, which so many of us as entrepreneurs struggle with. So definitely it's about anything that's blocking you or stopping you from getting you to where you want to be. So what are some of the other forms of adversity that entrepreneurs commonly face? Uh, look, I think um, uh, being an entrepreneur, there are just so many. I mean, as I often say, an entrepreneur is just someone who's a conqueror of, a conqueror of adversity. Um, but I'd say probably the top four um, uh, adversities, the number one cash flow shortages, even someone uh, as, you know, as Richard Branson who once said that money always seems to take, to take too long to come in, but it's too quick to, to go out. And I think most of us entrepreneurs can, can agree with that. So um, it is definitely trying to manage cash flow and planning for um, – those unexpected events, and also understand that income can just take a little bit longer to, to come in. I mean, theory is fine, but practice it can take a bit longer. So that can often be a real pain, number one. Number two, uh, it's uh, people not doing what they say they'll do. Um, as, as an entrepreneur, we, you know, we are sure we may be in business for ourselves, but it's all about working with and through people. And often either you know, um, staff can let us down or our suppliers can get, let us down, yet our customers don't care about our problems. They just want what we promise regardless. So often the toughest types of adversity you face are not the things that are our fault, but it's still our responsibility to, to fix. The third thing I would say would be the increasing speed of change. As an entrepreneur, you just never know what you're going to face each day. You just need to be on. You really can't afford to have an off day because you just don't know what's, what's happening. It's the constant change that makes it exciting, but it's also what brings the, the most amount of, of challenges and unexpected obstacles that just, just come our way from, from everywhere. And finally, I would say it'd be failure. As entrepreneurs, we've got to learn. We've got, we're going to make a lot of mistakes. That's the only way to learn how to do it right is often to do, do something wrong. I mean, James Dyson, inventor of the uh, Dyson vacuum cleaner, said he made 5,126 failed attempts before he successfully created his now famous vacuum cleaner. And he said he actively tried to do things the wrong way because that was how he learned how to do things the right way. And he got so comfortable with failure um, that, and he realized that failure is often, it's often the only way to succeed is to fail your way to, 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 um, to success. Um, so today, look, he's a billionaire, and I really think as entrepreneurs, getting comfortable with failure is one of the biggest challenges we have to face. And I couldn't agree more. So are there some foolproof ways that entrepreneurs can overcome severe adversity, or does it depend on the specific adversity they're facing? What are your thoughts on that, Nero? Yeah, great question, Michael. Um, I think it does come down to the specific adversity, but there are, just, there are some general principles that we can all follow. Um, I think the f first one is that we need to expect adversity as entrepreneurs. You've just got to be emotionally and mentally prepared that when you get up in the morning, you don't know what's coming your, your way, and you've got to be ready for, um, for, for the unexpected. So planning as much as you can for anything that's coming your way is great, but you've just got to be ready for the unexpected. The second thing is when challenges come, there's no point wondering why something unfair happened to you or why something complete out of your control is causing you difficulty. You've just got to accept what happened, and you've got to get busy working on, on a solution. Um, an entrepreneur friend of mine recently had a very successful business making huge money, but she was working with government contracts, and an overnight government policy change meant that all her clients' funding dried up. She had to close her business and had to fire all 23 staff. And now that had nothing to do with her. It was no fault of her own, but she's got to accept that. Now she's got to find the strength to start again and perhaps do so differently. So adversity is coming. You've just got to accept it. I think then when you do get adversity, once you accept it, you've got to decide to overcome that adversity and respond in the best way possible. So I often say it's not what happens to you, 
but what you do with what happens to you, that, that matters. Um, the global financial crisis of a few years ago caused several businesses to, to go bankrupt. Yet Groupon was founded during that time, and 18 months later, they were offered $5.3 billion by Google. Same circumstances, different decisions. So if we can expect adversity, accept it, and then decide to find the opportunity in the crisis, there are three key steps that we can, we can take to kind of make ourselves move forward and overcome the adversity that, that we're facing. Great. And yeah, play, uh, going off of that, I mean, your focus isn't on just getting through adversity, but actually turning into an advantage. So how is that possible? Absolutely right. Yeah, for sure. Because once you overcome an adversity, I always believe, look, every challenge has an implicit benefit. And really what we need to do is once we've overcome the adversity, we need to look back and see who we are, <clears throat> who we are at the end of the challenge. Because once you've overcome adversity, look back and see what was the advantage, what was it, did the, um, did the uh, challenges uh, open up a new opportunity for you, did they steer you on a new direction, do you now have a level of self-confidence, for example, that you wouldn't have had before, I often say that the only way to find out how strong we are is um, by going through a challenge where we have no option but to be strong, and that's when we realize how, what our inner strength is, so there is always an advantage to every ad adversity, um, and the thing is that we must first approach our challenges with that, with that attitude rather than saying, oh, just another problem or let me get through it. It's like, well, hold on, what is the advantage here? If, for example, you're constantly in the same type of problems, is there now an opportunity to create a system um, in, in your business that's going to completely get rid of these, these obstacles? If, for example, um, you're, you're having certain... Um, other challenges, do you need to bring in an expert rather than just banging your head against a brick wall? And that might, you know, supercharge you. So it is often the obstacles that, that um, give us our milestones to move forward. It's our milestones for achievement. It's the obstacles that send say, okay, I'm about to learn something new. Um, I'm about to grow. And that's really what I find is the, 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 uh, the advantage in the adversity often comes from overcoming the obstacle. And we look back on the, those challenges we faced, and we know we've got the maximum advantage from it when we turn back and look at those very obstacles that cause us pain and we look back at them and say, wow, they are my greatest blessings. For me as an entrepreneur going broke the very first time, today, now uh, seven years later, I look back on that as a great blessing because I learned so much from it and I wouldn't have learned those lessons if I hadn't gone through those challenging times. I think that's true for everyone. And what's your best overall piece of advice for other entrepreneurs? I think the best advice I, I, I can give everyone is decide in advance that you're going to win no matter what. Challenges are coming your way and that you're going to come back stronger from every challenge you face um, and, that, and that it's not over until you win. And really, if you adopt that attitude, sure, you may have your down days and, yeah, you may go to bed defeated and that's perfectly fine, but wake up the next morning with a new attitude and be ready to take on the challenges that are coming your way. And how can people find out more about what you're currently working on? Yeah, uh, look, Michael, I'm, I'm, I'm on all the uh, various social media. They've just got to um, search Nero Thambi Palay and having a unique name. I'll, I'll definitely come up pretty, pretty early on in the search results on Facebook, Instagram, etc., or just my website, NeroThambiPalay.com, where um, they can get my um, free guide on, you know, on the five steps of transforming adversity into advantage. Great. Well, Nero, thanks again for your time and your insight on adversity for us. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, Michael.